so here is the count wheel. Uh, we've just counted up to 12. It will next strike one and so on all the way around. And you can see the count wheel here will just strike one. There it goes. And the, the locking lever coming into the count wheel stopping after the first blow. And as we rotate again, the one is now visible, the time is going round quarter past, half past, and as the disc goes round underneath, it will be changing um, to come up as the first of the even numbers, which is two, and so that when it appears in the window on the nine side, it will then, it's all set ready on the count wheel to strike two. Here she goes. One, two, and the, the wheel is locked by the locking lever here. Again, the escape wheel is a lovely, very finely made, uh, not over-engineered, not over-materialed, uh, just a very, very beautiful escape wheel with the anchor escapement underneath driven from the pivoting cock um, with engaged onto the pendulum. So the clock was made in about 1669 and cost was becoming an issue uh, so that the workshop was being taken over by Azurus's son John and he had a keen eye for cutting down cost. So the back cock here, if you look, instead of being a casting, it's just been bent out of um, a flat piece of uh, brass. Cost saving, and then the, the actual cock to mount the uh, pendulum spring has just been uh, soldered in place, whereas his father would have made it the complete thing as a casting, um, which costs more. The going train is weight driven and you can just see the bottom of the uh, wheel with the clicks for winding. Um, but look at the size in comparison with this great wheel. Um, it's huge. And that's so that they have a, a shorter train because you can get away with this clock um, with a three-wheel train against the normal four-wheel train and so that the ratio between the great wheel and the uh, first wheel uh, goes down with the huge size of the wheel. It's a cost saving again. Um, make one wheel bigger and leave out another wheel, an arbor and a pinion and uh, it's a big cost saving. So the movement is a typical from until construction. The dial plate is mounted uh, with cast little pillars which go through the front plate and here you can see the latch to hold it into place. The pillars are the standard from until pillars with a knob in the middle and a half knob at each end to give a big area of contact with the plates and then the on each side uh, two fine ornamental little rings. Uh, it looks very pretty and if you look it's very up close to the fly of the strike train and so that he's had to cut a little bit of the knob away to clear the strike damper of the fly. With the escape wheel going round backwards, just behind. The 
the central knob is threaded here and it's fitted into the case onto two wrought iron um, flat folded uh, lugs uh, so that there isn't a seat board and it's simply held on the lugs. It's a very similar situation to the three train uh, John Froman Teal which also doesn't have a seat board and is also fitted on lugs. <laughs>